Welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, we're in the art gallery. You know, some artists in comics have a style that is so outside of the realm of what we traditionally see, especially in superhero comics, that it seems like their work belongs in a gallery. Uh, and uh, you can take a few guesses who I might be talking about, but if we go all the way back to the 80s, the original art gallery comic guy, Bill Sienkiewicz, today we'll look at the New Mutants War Children, an all-new one-shot by Sienkiewicz, written by his old partner Chris Claremont. Can they recapture that glory? Let's find out today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at and talk about the New Mutants War Children one-shot. Came out this week. At my store, they th sort of thought this was the new New Mutant series, number one, from uh, Hickman. It is not. This is a one-shot um, that was part of a series of one-shots that included um, the Incredible Hulk Last Call, which I also reviewed, and, 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 um, and, the, and the Captain America Bermuda one-shot. All of these are sort of one-shots that took legacy artists writer teams, if you will, popular teams from the past, put them back on current comics to see maybe if they could sell a few more comics than these whippersnappers and, and their newfangled comics of today. And there's been mixed success. I wasn't a huge fan of the Incredible Hulk one. You can check out my review on that one uh, if you go to my channel. Um, but I was really looking forward to this one because this featured the return of Bill Sienkiewicz, uh, who's just one of the all-time greats in comics and you know let's um let's dive into the million dollar comics cam for a second but first let's take a look at uh bill sienkiewicz's website right and you can see a lot of cool stuff here it's a nice website and uh he's sort of broken it down into his major categories of things that he's worked on um comics and uh like it, of course in marvel he's very well known for um besides the new mutants which is sort of his uh, break in. He did Moon Knight. He did work on Electra Assassin. Um, worked on stuff like The Shadow. Did some work in the DC Universe as well. And is just a, 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 a well-renowned artist. I mean, you can look at some of his original art prices going on in here, and you can see why uh, um, you know that he's a very respected guy in the name of art and in the name of comics. So let's go back to comics. Has this guy lost a step? I'm going to say no. Uh, the quality is super high. You know, when I was a kid, let me preface this for a second. So, Bill Sienkiewicz is sort of controversial amongst superhero fans, right? Especially at the time in the 80s on the New Mutants. His sort of abstract art influence style was literally like nothing on the comic stands at the time. This was coming straight out of an art school education and art galleries and... Uh, sort of modern abstract art which didn't really play well with uh, a medium that was you know at the time most heavily influenced by Neil Adams who drew from uh, a photorealistic style of the old cartoon strips like this this is a lot of things but photorealistic it ain't um, but what it is is ultra expressive right and when you tie in uh, this sort of expressive ability, someone with the, the, the compositional uh, knowledge and skill and chops of Bill Sienkiewicz, you get some pretty fun to look at and really far out comics. Um, and New Mutants, especially the Claremont New Mutants, is a, kind of a good choice because, you know, his stuff was all over the place. The New Mutants were not just about mutants and, and sort of science fiction, but they had this... Uh, a lot of stuff going on with um, uh, uh, with hell and, and magic and uh, sort of the spirit realm and Native American. Just just a, a, a ton of influences that, um, that Sienkiewicz was really able to draw upon to make some really cool, amazing looking visuals. Now, uh, visually, I think this stuff holds up pretty well. Story-wise... It was a little bit all over the place. It's sort of like a, 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 
a, a never before seen day that happened in the life of the new mutants that we just never heard about and there's a big battle and it's sort of all the greatest hits right like everybody gets involved we've got warlock and doug and uh uh joining together and and merging and we've got uh magic and we've got uh, her fighting you know her demon self from hell and a lot of stuff that we're familiar with if you're familiar with the claremont Sinkevitz new mutant stuff um now the problem here i'm gonna get a little bit controversial here so what i'm gonna say is that the comic was okay it's kind of forgettable it doesn't really matter continuity wise if you like bill Sinkevitz and you should it's worth picking up just to look at because uh the guy has not lost many steps uh, and by the way um if you uh, want to see a great interview, you want to check out Cartoonist Kayfabe and their interview. I'll try to put a link in the description to their um, interview at a convention with Sinkevitz, who really looks like he has not aged a day since the 80s. It's really amazing. And and that taking care of himself really shows in, you know, his continued skill at the, at, at the comics art board. So I, I want to talk about something a little bit more controversial for a second. I want to talk about Chris Claremont. Chris Claremont, the writer. Chris Claremont is not my favorite writer of comics. I love the X-Men. I loved the old X-Men from the late 70s and early 80s and stuff. But somewhere along the way, his stuff got really tortured and convoluted. And I really didn't enjoy the writing too much. And I came up with... On the other hand, that was all happened after John Byrne left the X-Men and he parted ways. And that's where things sort of sort of went a little bit off for the X-Men. Now John Byrne is one of the all-time greats. He went off and has done basically every other character in the Marvel and DC universe um if not superbly then certainly competently. Like he's done every book and has done some of the most amazing stuff ever. Uh, to revitalize the Superman character in the 80s. He's the only one who's ever successfully rebooted Superman. And he's gone on to do many things, including his own creator-owned and written stuff like The Next Men. Um, and and just has done so many things. Um, whereas Chris Claremont, you know, he wrote the X-Men. He still kind of writes X-Men sometimes. I remember he put out a novel that was not very successful or popular because... You know, Claremont's style, I believe it's kind of an anachronism. He is like the last of the great uh, older style writers, I suppose. There's a lot more tell than show in a Claremont comic. There's a lot of dialogue. Uh, often written in sort of a weird, tortured style. Many, he loves dialects. Many, many characters have different dialects. So we've got Ron Sinclair's Irish brogue, and we've got Warlock talking in that annoying techno speak. Come on, the guy is like a artificial intelligence from another planet, can change into anything, but can't master his pronouns. All right, I'm sorry, digressing. Uh, so Claremont, not my favorite. So the analogy that it popped into my head today, and I mean no insult to anyone, Claremont's a legendary writer. He's written more. He's had a lot of great ideas and great story ideas and collaborated with a lot of great artists to make awesome comics. So I don't want to denigrate him, but I, I feel like the analogy to me is he's almost like the Art Garfunkel of comics. Whereas... Um, you know, Simon and Garfunkel were great together. John Byrne was the kind of the Paul Simon that went on to do many, many, many other things that we've all loved, whereas Claremont didn't do too much. He wrote Latter-day X-Men stuff, and some people really, you know, that preferred their Claremont X-verse stuck to that. I was never a particular fan of it. Um, and that's why I can't give this book a more glowing, enthusiastic review. But you know what? Who I can give a glowing and enthusiastic review to? All of you for supporting this channel. You guys watch it and uh, watch these reviews and uh, make comments that really have uh, opened my eyes and really given me a lot of great ideas. Stuff that never even occurs to me when I read these comics pop up in the comics and that makes me think about new things and talk about them here. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos with others. Uh, and keep reading comics check out cartoonist kayfabe 
you've probably seen it already. It's a very popular YouTube channel. But man, if you like comics, the way I like comics, well, these guys really like comics. Jim Rugg and uh, Ed Piscor and Tom Scioli do some great interviews, do some in-depth deep dives on comics. And, you know, I've, I've, I've loved all of their stuff and watch it all the time. So thank you for watching and we will see you next time.